and welcome to this PSN32 tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at yet another feature of Photoshop here if I can select it. It's the background eraser tool located beneath the eraser tool. Now the background eraser tool is actually a fairly useful tool. Yes, it is a pretty destructive tool, but it's pretty darn useful. Check this out. Let's say we want to isolate this guy or we want to replace the whole sky. Let's try to replace the whole sky here uh, in this image and save obviously the water and the mountains and the guy just flying off the rope swing and all that good stuff. Um, I have some options up here in my uh, toolbar. The default option for this brush is going to be contiguous. We'll touch on discontiguous. Find edges, we don't really use find edges. Discontiguous can be useful though. So we're going to work with contiguous right now. We have an option to allow Photoshop to select the colors um, that we're sort of erasing. And this is called the continuous sampling mode as you can see there from the little tool tip. We also have this once sampling option which basically selects one color and only erases that color that's not quite as useful but it can be useful and we also have this uh, erase only colors that match your background swatch which I don't use it's in a few of the tools here in Photoshop I don't use it tolerance of about 50% is pretty good the higher your tolerance the more uh, lenient Photoshop's gonna be and probably the more it's gonna erase stuff that you want to keep so just like keep that in mind protect foreground color we're gonna check that off we're gonna come back to that in just a second I'm gonna show you what I use that for here's how the background erase tool works I'm gonna zoom in on this guy see the little dot in the middle of the brush Whatever that's hovering over, that color is what you're going to erase. So if I click, boom, you can see we erase that color, but not the guy. If I hover over the guy and I have that dot on the guy, well, we get rid of him. We don't want that. So we can just select around him a few. We select around the rope, in between the rope there. And we can just begin painting all of this stuff away. See that? We're just saving the rope. Very nice. All right? So that's really pretty cool. But now what happens when we get down here near the trees? It actually does a pretty good job. See that? All right, we move in near the trees. Cool. It's pretty good. It's not perfect, you know, but it's it's one click. It's fast. All right, when we get down here, you can see by the mountains, it really takes a chunk out of the mountains. So let's undo that. Here's where we're going to do a couple things. Number one, we're going to set this to discontiguous. Discontiguous means that, well, remember here when we erased around the rope and it didn't really erase the stuff in the middle? That's because that was sort of its own little chunk of pixels separated by the rope. Contiguous means it's only going to erase stuff as long as it's kind of out there with the brush, not surrounded by other pixels. So for instance, with contiguous, see this chunk of color in the trees? When I click like this, it's not going to touch that stuff in there because it can't get to it. But if I set this to discontiguous, it's going to erase that junk in the middle as well. So discontiguous can be very useful when you need to reach inside of a different area surrounded by pixels, like a tree. Now, down here by the mountain, we have a different problem. We have this color that's very close to the background color that we need to get rid of. So how do we go ahead protecting that? Well, this is where protect foreground color comes into play. We can hold down our alt or option key, sample that mountain color, and then try to erase, and you can see it does a really nice job of protecting most of that mountain color. I'm going to uncheck protect uh, foreground color again. We're going to need to do it again here with these mountains, however, because you see it's going to take a huge bite out of them. So let's go ahead and tick on protect foreground color. And I'm going to zip through this here. So I'm going to sample there and protect that. Great. I'm going to sample right here. Boom. Get rid of that. I'm going to sample here. Boom. Get rid of that. Sample there. Boom. Get rid of that. And just go right over this and just sample and get rid of the stuff that needs to be gotten rid of. See all of this blue here within the trees? That's where the discontiguous mode becomes very, very useful. Just click once. See, click once there. Whoa, hello. Click the wrong area. There we go, something like that. See, it does a pretty remarkable job of really knocking out a lot of that color that we want to knock out. We got some color here beneath this kid's arm. Great. Uh, again, it's not perfect, but it's really stinking close. So here, again, we've done that really, really quickly, very fast, and we've gotten pretty pretty complex selections along the edges. We can do something like drag this sky over here into this document. Whoa, it's on top of our uh, selection there. And you can see we can replace the sky very, very quickly and easily. Now, the mountains don't look right because they look like what would be a day haze, and this is very obviously a sunset, but I'm not worried about doing the color correcting, making everything blend perfectly. The fact of the matter is, very quickly, I'm talking in moments, we've gone ahead and made pretty complex selections with the background eraser tool using some of the features like contiguous and discontiguous, adjusting the tolerance, working with protecting the foreground color, and all of that. So, the background tool in Photoshop, the background eraser tool, I should say, in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.